A warm welcome to this week's edition of Breeding to Win, where we're bringing you the Breeding to Win show from Reinkiesfontein Racing Establishment. We're here at the Mike de Kock Racing Stables, where we will be chatting to Mike de Kock later on in the show regarding his international syndicate, which he's just recently launched in Hong Kong. But right now, let's take you to some news from Aventure. Aventure Estate is proud to announce a new charity partnership with the Peninsula School Feeding Association that will coincide with the annual Grade 1 Aventure Estate Cape Phillies Guineas, which takes place at Kenilworth Racecourse on Saturday the 6th of December. The Cape Phillies Guineas Day is one of the main race meetings on the Western Cape calendar and has always had a family-oriented theme. So there are lots of side events planned. The link up with the well-known and respected Cape Town based charity will be mutually beneficial as not only will substantial funds be raised towards a worthy cause, but the marketing teams of Aventure State, PSFA and Western Cape Race have worked together in proposing new ideas that will add to the day's entertainment. This has opened the door for a long-term relationship. Aventure State and Kenilworth Racing have committed to providing the PSFA with a minimum amount of 100,000 Rand. This donation will be a portion to the feeding of children and selected underprivileged schools fed by PSFA in the Western Cape. Its method of distribution will have the staff and children of each school on tender hooks as the percentage of the 100,000 they will receive will depend on the outcome of the Cape Phillies Guineas. Every single school involved will receive a cash prize, but not before much excitement is expended as the amount of the prize will be in direct proportion to the finishing position of the horse representing them. The draw for the horses will be held at the estate in Somerset West on Thursday the 27th of November and will be attended by the respective school principals. Aventure's estate general manager Pippa Mickleborough said, the approach by the fundraising team of the PSFA came at just the right time as we were in the process of identifying a new charity beneficiary for our race day, which re would result in a mutually beneficial relationship and a win-win situation for both partners. We look forward to a long and rewarding partnership with PSFA. In the last rack, ready to run stakes, presented by CTS. Red Ray gets given his head and he comes forward and takes up the running. Captain America's on the chase. Back on the inside, accelerator rider towards the inside. Red Ray's got a race on his hands. Have Captain America pulled alongside of him. Captain America, Red Ray. Captain America, Red Ray. It's Captain America climbing up. Captain America beats Red Ray on the line. We believe in excellence. We believe that if you're going to do something, you do it to your best ability. We aim to make Balmoral um, number one in the Southern Hemisphere, not just South Africa.
Well, it's my pleasure to welcome onto the Breeding to Win show this week, Mike DeCock, fresh back from his travels. Mike, thank you for joining us. I know you've been extremely busy and uh, you've just got back from Hong Kong where you launched the Mike DeCock International Syndicate, a great concept. Just tell us about it. Julie, yes, it was actually uh, not my own idea. It was, in fact, um, a CTS initiative from uh, Adrian and uh, Grant. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a concept they came up with, you know, to attract international investment. And at this time, I must just clear up any misgivings that I'm not nailing my colours to any sales company's mast, but um, uh, it was an initiative of CTS. And for me, any initiative from any sales company that is good for South African racing, which is what I'm firmly behind, um, I'm happy to put my name to. So this will attract uh, international uh, investment. Um, we're, uh, we obviously decided to launch uh, in Hong Kong, um, but that doesn't mean to say that it was purely for Hong Kong owners at all. Uh, it's a little unfortunate that um, uh, South African polit politics reared its ugly head there and that there were objections to our presence, um, but um, I think we got some very good coverage, some very positive coverage out of the press and support from the Hong Kong Jockey Club. So. Uh, you know, as I said, it's, a, it's an initiative that needs to be applauded. Well, Mike, tell us how the syndicate will work. Well, basically, I mean, we initially started off at 12 members, but quite frankly, it could be any amount of members, uh, with a minimum entry level of 500,000. The, the, the thinking is to try and get as, as many people together uh, internationally, but that doesn't exclude um, uh, local owners. And, of course... Um, just to satisfy our compatriots in, in Hong Kong. It's not only for Hong Kong owners, it right. was just that we, we launched the initiative there. And at this stage of the game, uh, we thought it was a good place to do it. Uh, and of course, the, Hong Kong is probably the most receptive in terms of wanting to look at export protocols with South Africa at the moment uh, in that Winfred is, mm. is very much uh, behind South Africa. And we thought we'd we capitalise on that. How did the launch go? We thought it went very well. Um, we got you know, a fair bit of press coverage, um, positive coverage. The message is out there. It's now basically following up and, 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 and uh, nailing people down. I noticed that you're using quite a bit of the social media at the moment and I saw pics of you and Dougie White together. Was he supportive of this initiative? Yeah, it was actually fantastic that, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know, Dougie had been a... Uh, you know, a good uh, flag bearer for South Africa and a true South African was there to support us, and uh, which was fantastic. He didn't have to be. And, um, he, you know, he was uh, right behind it and got the message, was behind the message, put it that way, which I think gave it a lot of credibility and fantastic to, to have him there and a good, uh, you know, um, positive influence. Yeah, he's... Um... He didn't need to be, you know, and he, out of his own, and we, we really respect that. When you see Dougie in Hong Kong, you realise what a hero they've made him out to be. Well, you know, deservedly. I mean, he's, he's been there quite a long time. He's won 13 championships. He's played the system very, very well there, and uh, he's been a, a massive ambassador for South Africa, you know. So, um, you know, possibly, uh, you know, he, he should be receiving more accolades uh, from South Africa. I don't think we... Well, a lot of us who do know him realise what he's done for us, but there's, a, there's, there's, there's some that would um, be, a, be absolutely astounded if you weren't really saw what he achieved. How do people get involved in the syndicate? Well, at this stage of the game, um, sort of Jahan, is, is, is the, Jahan uh, or, or Grant are the go-to guys. Um, to get in touch with them, Jahan will be very involved in the selection of bloodstock. And um, I think, yeah, that'll, that's, that's basically it. It's simple. Or get hold of me, you know, it's not a problem there. How many horses are you looking at, including in the syndicate? I don't think we want to limit ourselves. I mean, we want to initially look to buying anything between three, four, five youngsters mm. uh, in January. Um, we also don't want to limit ourselves completely to youngsters. Um, we would, there would be a view to looking at horses that, that are ready-made as well to try and keep the interest up of the mm. syndicate. But, you know, again, uh, um, one has to, a lot of this can be decided by seeing how many numbers we have and how many come forward and how much we do raise. Mm. Uh, we certainly don't want to limit ourselves or knock anyone back, and we've got between now and January to really sort of nail it down. But the initial thing is to start buying in January. 
Now, on a different note, you also had time to meet up with the Hong Kong Jockey Club on a horse movement. How did that pan out? Um, well, we met with Bill Nardo as Winfred wasn't there at the time. Um, uh, I thought it went very, very well, uh, very enlightening, um, what they had to say. I know that Winfred has taken a, a, a personal interest in this movement between South Africa and Hong Kong. That's a big positive. To have a man like that uh, behind movement uh, is a privilege. We, un we are going to find a fair bit of resistance because Australia have got a stronghold on that market. And let's face it, Australians are all over and they, f they yeah. full up in the, in the jockey club in, uh, Hong, Kong. in Hong Kong. So uh, it's not going to be easy. We're going to have to answer some very serious questions and get all our ducks in a row. But when you've got the man driving it behind you, I think it makes, mm. it, it'll make a big difference. You know, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a market that Australia have had a strangle on and I, I don't think they want to let it go because there's, there's big money involved and uh, even selling horses that are unraced, it's mm. a massive business there. Let's hope we can actually push our way through there because I think it, it will be a great boost for South African horse racing. Yeah, I don't, you know, it's almost, you know, one, it's inconceivable to think of how much uh, it could change things for us mm -hmm. if one looks at um, uh, what it's done for the Australian racing market. I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be too far behind and we, fairly, we, we offer a good value with the rand as it is and of course, uh, uh, you know, a tough horse that um, tend to, to race quite often and uh, they're quite resilient when it comes to travelling. So um, I think we've got a lot going for us. We need to capitalise on that interest though, we can't um, let that wane uh, and hopefully you know, behind the scenes, someone's actually getting, getting off their butts and doing something about it. Mike, just before we wrap up with you, um, if you can just tell us a little bit about your string, if they will be joining the Hong Kong International Races in December, and of course the main one would be Variety Club. Well, Julie, you obviously don't read the press. Um, <laughs> Variety Club is a doubtful starter for um, December. Uh, he's had one or two niggles and you know, he probably needs, well, he does need a good break now before we press on with him. So oh, he's, okay. it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, it's out for him, definitely. Vercingetrix, we'll, we'll see how he goes. He's doing very well in, in England, but um, right now, you know, it'll be up to the shake whether he wants to. You know, he travelled badly last time, so what, does one risk the carnival by going to Hong Kong? Or does one just go straight on to Hong mm -hmm. Kong and then maybe on to the QE2? So we'll have to see with him. Mike, thank you for taking the opportunity to chat to us today. We wish you all the best for the future and thanks for being such a great ambassador for South Africa. Pleasure. New Turf Carriers is a family-run business owned by Mark and Dory Sham and their three sons, Michael, Matthew and Marcus. New Turf Carriers has been in long distance transport since 1995 and pride themselves in excellent service, punctuality and loyalty to their clients. Every single stud farm and every single sale to every single race course, New Turf Carriers pride themselves in delivering your horse safely. The welfare of your horse is paramount and it is to this end that we have our own midway stop between Johannesburg and Cape Town. This is situated at Colesburg, where we have a stabling facility for 60 horses so that the horses on long trips can get off and have a rest during their journey. The bottom line is, new turf carriers take your horse from door to door with pride, passion and punctuality.
Well, the stallion we will be featuring on this week's show is Jay Pig, who earned over 40 million rand during his racing career. And his stud career has also taken off, with his progeny setting the tracks alight. Truenex rates JPEG's pedigree A++ as one of the finest pedigrees in the world. He is a grandson of the world-dominant sire AP Indy, out of a daughter of the splendid broodmare sire Al Mufti. And he is rewarding his supporters with swathes of winners every week. He was called the Giant Killer after his record-breaking defeat of eight international Group 1 winners in the Grade 1 Dubai Duty Free. With over 40 million rand to his credit as a racehorse, South Africa's all-time record stakes earner has an official international timeform rating of 126, making him the highest rated racehorse ever bred in South Africa and also the highest stakes earner ever. His four grade one wins on three continents saw him smash two international records earning him two Equus Awards, including International Horse of the Year. JPEG was an instant success at stud with his first crop to race. He was the third leading freshman sire by first crop stakes winners in the 2012-2013 racing season. He was also second leading second crop sire in the 2013-2014 season by percentage winners to runners and his 26 individual winners also placed him second amongst this group with one less than the leader Judpot. His second crop of juveniles to race in the 2013-2014 season place him second amongst the same group by number of stakes races won. His stakes winners include Marsh Shirtliff and Bryn Russell's flying juvenile filly Hot Affair who won the listed Perfect Promise Sprint by two lengths. But Hot Affair has it safe, and Hot Affair goes on to win it. It's tight for second. And in her next start, she dispatched the talented filly Red Deesa in the Grade 3 Kenilworth Phillies Nursery by three lengths, marking herself as one of the leaders of her generation. Hot Affair is too good. She's dawdling the nursery. Hot Affair is going to win it comfortably. The battle's on for the places. His first crop included the stakes winners Flash Drive and Olympic Owen. Flash Drive broke his maiden in record time, which was even faster than the 40-year-old record that he broke when he won the Grade 3 Cape Nursery. It's Flash Drive in front. Tiger Island is coming along, along the inside, but Flash Drive is going on to score. Flash Drive beats Tiger Island. His first stakes winner, Olympic Owen, started as favorite on debut and won by 10 lengths. And then he won the Grade 3 Protea Stakes, where he flew up late to beat a smart-looking field of juveniles. Towards the outside, Olympic Owen is running on with Willow Magic, who's coming on strongly, but it's Jimmy Chu. Olympic Owen is coming home hard. Olympic Owen coming home smartly. Olympic Owen has gone on to beat Jimmy Chu. His progeny are popular in the sales ring, achieving prices as high as 1.2 million rand, with several others achieving 550,000 rand and 500,000 rand. JPEG is the property of a syndicate and stands at Claverflay Stud and is managed by John Freeman. Number 14, all the secret is victorious. Well, Witcher. And for the lads, my dad. Shay Shay takes the lead. Shay Shay wins the Elgos. Emerald Cup, Africa's richest horse race on sand. The 27th of September features Lone Hill Estate, Daniel Barron, Matthew Moll, Loy Chele, DJ Fundazel, and Super Entertainment for the whole family. 
great picnic site packages, hospitality, accommodation, the choice is yours. Call 011-681-1702 and don't miss out on the greatest horse race on sand. from them and very well done to Sean and to Chris I think they've got a bit of a horse in their hands Peregrine on the far inside but Pomodora and Pomodora stays on the better win well today he is a really really a nice horse to ride Pomodora in the middle's picked it up in the closing stages and Pomodora has raced away and has won it well he just stamped himself as a top three-year-old in the country Manji, Manji and Pomodora, here comes the line, very close, maybe Smanji, Manji and a photo. And I'm excited for Pomodora to get to start and I'm, I'm excited for him to start producing. It's, it's just a whole new adventure and a whole new start and um, believe you me, when Chris and I see them in the ring, we will put our head down. Anzirak ready to run stakes presented by CTS Redway gets given his head and he comes forward and takes up the running. Captain America's on the chase. Back along the inside, Accelero. Right towards the inside. Redway's got a race on his hands. As Captain America pulls alongside of him. Captain America, Redway. Captain America, Redway. It's Captain America climbing up. Captain America beats Redway on the line. Gavel House is the leading website for trading horses online. Selling your racehorse, mare or even a share in a yearling is so easy on Gavel House. You can browse our sire's directory to match the best mating for your mare, with text description, videos and up-to-date sire's reports. Gavelhouse.com is the best way to sell your horse. We reach places others can't, where buyers and sellers deal direct and pay no commission. Go to gavelhouse.com. Well, the two horses being offered on Gavel House are both horses in training. The first is a 2010 gelding, Freezing Point, a very game gelding who is very sound and consistent. Will stay anything between 14 to 2,400 meters, which makes him very versatile. His dam in Upuert was a three time winner. She's an own sister to Celtic Grove. Horse of the Year and Champion Three-Year-Old Classic Male in 2000 and 2001. 
If you are interested in getting involved in Freezing Point, you can contact Jonathan Snaith. The second horse in training is a 2010 filly, Chapel Hill. She's a winner and placed twice from only eight starts. She is currently in training with Joey Ramsden. She's an honest, genuine and sound individual. She's off a very good merit rating and she placed after her maiden win and is sure to win some more. Her dam, Miss Galilei, was a four times winner, including the Spook Express handicap and is the dam of a seven times winner, Captain Sidereus. If you are interested, get in contact with Derek Bruchman. Well, that's a wrap for this week's show. Don't forget to join us next week for more Breeding to Win from myself, Julie Alexander, and the rest of the Breeding to Win team. Goodbye.